Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared with my lovely wife, Kara. Yo! How is everybody doing tonight? Hopefully, good. You're good? Mm -hmm. Good. Hopefully the microphone is working okay. Um, I carried my best tech ascot just got a couple days ago. You know, I've never checked out the best tech ascot, but I remember seeing it on LTKs and it seemed like a lot of people liked it. Mm-hmm. A oh, little bit of a big one. Um, mm -hmm. Michael Morgan says the 0562 tie and the case sod buster junior. I'm guessing that's what you were carrying today. I've been carrying. What's up, Mr. Matt? Oh, wrong one. Mm -hmm. I own a shitload of knives. I'm doing fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. What's up, Mr. Matt? I was carrying the two Civibis today, the, the button lock and the, um, the brazen been uh, testing them out um if you've seen my instagram video you might have seen a little clip i put together fresh haircut yes yes thank you thank hi. you thank you, you no hi kara part. hi kara hi no frosted tips nope not yet not yet still working on them though i'm working on them in this lighting it kind of looks like you have a frosted side does it? Yeah. Oh, because it's lighter uh -huh. and it's shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? Seems logical. Says Slicey Dicey reviewed the ascot like two years ago. I wish to list it and finally pulled the trigger on it a week ago. You know, I got tons of those that it seems like some knives you, uh, you know, you see a review on and it's one you want so bad and you just keep seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. And it's like all the reviewers will review it. So it's always in the back of your head. And you don't get it. You don't pull the trigger. Maybe you don't have the money. Maybe you already bought something. So it like, you know, it kind of took the place of that because, you know, it came out right before, you know, that thing. Then um, you don't wind up getting it. And then the reviews stop. You don't see it for a while. Then all of a sudden you see it again and it brings back that love. And you're like, man, I should get it now. What's up, Corbin? Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. So I got a few knife things we're going to talk about, and then we have some stories after the first hour we will get into. What's up, Aaron? I'm just kind of letting some people pull in here. Let me uh, turn it on over here. Oh, look at our thumbnail right now. I should change That's that. Wrong. I know. I We can change it anytime. What's up, Jared? Oh, Jared what? said, what up? And I said, Literally. what up back? What is going on? 31 guys, people in here. Guys, 31 guys. Are you fucking kidding me? You think a girl can't I said here? people. You I said, said people. I switched, I switched it really switched quick. It. I switched it. So it is women's history month. I think, did you know that there's a month for everything these days? I don't know if you know. Oh, that's I've true. A lot of I don't know if that's true. I swear to God. Is it right? They made me fill out a paper at work to say oh, like, fuck all the things and this one pissed me off okay they were gonna have all the female managers write like a like a paper i don't like it and one <laughs> of the questions on it was as a female leader yeah what are some struggles you've had to overcome yeah name them my answer was i've never had to overcome anything in the workspace specifically because i was a female Good answer. i've more had to deal with the fact that i was a very young manager or that you are human right like, to me, it's like, to me, you, if, there's don't been fall a, a, if there's been a specific like discrimination against me, it was when I was 18 and a manager well, because like, I was 18. Well, it's like being a girl, you know, that there's no different than being a guy. I mean, when you're doing the job, right? So it's not like you have to well, overcome something specifically. What? There's certain shit that, but it's not a big deal is the thing. No, what though? There's certain shit like I can't lift at work and I have to. Oh, call well, dude. like if you're talking about strength things, but then like yeah. signing up for the job, it says like you have to be able to lift this lift amount of weight. And most people can lift that amount of weight. If you can't do that, that's a you thing. A guy could be the same way. Yeah. I'm just saying that. But I'm saying like, but my point is, is that just for example, all the other females, because this was like posted in a room, uh -huh. all the other females were like, oh, I've had to deal with being mansplained to, I've had to deal with, um, and if you I don't know, just I read all the statements mm -hmm. and I'm like, wow, you're really letting that make yeah. you a victim. Right. Instead of right. the fact that maybe the person is just a condescending dick, right. you turn it right. into he's 
Man's Man's playing, playing, right. I'm not saying there's not people that don't do that or that don't act that way, but I'm just saying in the general scheme of things, to write a question on a paper, assuming that every single female leader... I don't think that's legal, um... What? Uh, Lacey, um, that's not that's not legal. Men get paid more here. I used to get five twenty five, and a man got eight for the same job. Um, a lot of times they're Wait, there no. longer. I don't think that's that's not there. That's illegal. They can't do that. No I mean, job can pay a person more because of their gender or anything like that. That's not legal. Um, and it's been proven over and over and over because that was like a huge thing. Like at the beginning of the year, they were saying that women. We're getting paid less, but then when they found out going through all the statistics, no men were getting paid more overall, but because they were working more hours, they were working more overtime. They didn't stay home with the kids, like especially if they had a pregnancy or anything like that, like a female would, which that's just more time. And, um, and then they were looking at certain job specifics, but job for job, uh, they get paid the exact yeah, same. It's completely illegal to walk into a job and say, this is the starting pay for right. you. This is the starting yes. pay for him. Now, this is something a lot of people don't realize. Like at my job, I was getting paid more than other people were simply because I was a hard worker mm -hmm. and I walked into the office and said, I want more money. Well, like when I, but I'm just saying like, you don't know why somebody's necessarily getting paid more. Right. Well, I get paid more than other people that mm -hmm. do my same job. When I showed up to that glass place, right. The guys that were working there for two years, I walked in the door and was making $2 an hour more than them. Because when I showed up, he asked me, what would I work for? And when he found out like my, my, like what I've done and Dude, like what yeah, I can yes. do, then he was willing to start me off more because I knew more. Right. So it's, you know, it's just a thing. So next thing, but what I was going to say though, about yours, like if you don't think a guy, like if we turned, like say every time a female explains something to us into woman splaining, I mean, it just, it's ridiculous. Guys deal with the same thing. It's kind of like, like say sexual harassment. If you don't think guys don't deal with that shit, it's just, we don't talk about it because it's petty. I think women do it more than men do. I, I believe that. I believe that. How many times <laughs> so have, I I, that. have you been talking and I've been like, no, it's facetious or just something like if, what do you mean? like if you say a word and you're like facetious, I'm like, no, it's facetious. You know, how many times have I oh, done that? Oh, woman splaining. Yeah. No, I know but what that's what I'm saying, though, is right. how many times have a I lot, done that lot, to you? A lot. Way more than you've done it to me. For sure. Because nature. men don't care as, as much. Well, and some women don't do, care. It's either. just like yeah. a personality trait, that's I think, true. where it bothers Very you true. and you want. It, in my case, it's not that it bothers me to hear it. Oh, it it's that I want to explain you it. to know the right way to say it. But I thought you were talking about like sexual harassment. Like, um, what? because I said, like, um, like, if you don't think a guy has the same thing like with uh like say like females like if they have like uh a guy come up and start flirting with them or hitting on them or a boss or whatever same thing happens to guys it's just guys don't ever talk about it yeah well i think in that situation the reason and i think it should be taken seriously either way and i've absolutely in pretty much every job i've ever been seen that type of shit happen both ways However, I think that the big difference is that when it happens to a woman from a man, there is an aspect of physical strength. So if they feel, I can tell you're reading, stop it. I'm if listening to they too. feel like that's not possible. I am. Though. It is not possible. I am because I've already read it. So go ahead. Okay. Well, I, what I'm saying is, is that if that happens to a woman in the workplace, I mm -hmm. think that it is a bit different because there's the aspect of physical strength. So if the creepy <sighs> for sure. flirting for sure. I agree. was to be taken 100%. to, there's that fear of force, and, which is not right, typically right, right. possible. And that's where the part where the guy doesn't care because the guy can't. Well, not can't. I'm not going to say always, they can't. but yeah. <clears throat> I had one time I was working at um, <clears throat> the nursing home and this, uh, this girl tried to drag me into one of the closets and tried shoving her tongue down my throat. And oh, yeah, I, I ran like a little girl. Like if you, <laughs> she was, a uh, um, she was big, you know, but she was very cute in the face, you know, but, uh, I was just being like, okay, so let me just make it clear though. I was flirting, but in the, the, like the kind gentleman way, you know, that's yeah. the way I took it. Right. I just took it as, you know, like, um, harmless, um, being sweet. And she took it the other way and she tried to fucking pin me in this room. And I ran, I literally ran like a little girl, not, not saying girls run, but you, it's just a figure of speech, but, uh, yeah. Um, 
Evil E says, I like being sexually harassed. And that's the next thing is that, see, guys sometimes, they don't say nothing because they like it. And girls sometimes don't say it either because they like it. But then, but like she said, there is the strength thing. Oh and that's God, why sometimes the guys don't the say nothing. This is the shit that I've ever read in my life. I cannot even talk about it. Okay. Let's go. When I was in the corp, some of the people I served with couldn't do a single pull-up and were su super fat and nasty. I would have traded them for a fit woman any day. You know what? I've done concrete what? with women that would outwork a lot of men. And I'm not joking. I'm talking about girls made of steel. Like I've worked in concrete is a hard labor job. I'm actually going to tell a story about um my first job when I was a kid and it was doing concrete. Um, I'll tell it later, but, but yeah, I've worked with some women that were some tough girls doing uh, even uh, landscaping. I did landscaping for like three years and there was this one girl I worked with, man, she was tough. Where are you going? I got hit by a 55 year old woman when I started my first job. At 20. There's all these dudes saying shit that's happening. Yeah, it's fucked up. And it I, does. Yeah. I've seen it. I have seen it happen. Uh -huh. Um, and then I think for men, there's the aspect of like, let's say as a woman, if they do some shit like that yeah. too, if you can't get away uh -huh. without physical touch, yeah, a lot of times I think men will just be like, fine, because they don't want to get the whole I hit a woman thing going. For sure. So it's almost like they feel like I can't defend myself because if I do, it's going to be taken a certain what way. I've seen a bunch of times is where like the girl keeps on like trying, right? And the guy like is trying to be nice, but not trying to be mean. But then eventually, you know, is like not interested. The girl winds up finally getting that signal, right? Yeah. And then she turns it on. She turns it on, makes him seem like he's a creep. He's this. And then like gets people against them. I've seen that like 10 times. And it's scary for a guy. It, it can be scary. And I'm not saying things can't be scary for a girl either, because I've seen girls that have been hit well, on by managers. And let stuff me say like this, and then we can move on. Yeah, from go this. ahead. But there was a situation at a place I used to work at. Absolutely. There was, there was a guy who was hitting on a girl who was much younger. And she like went out to lunch with him outside of work. And like she did things that egged it on mm -hmm. um, and then proceeded to go to HR. And like try to get him fired. Um, be, and I will admit that like he was being rather like once she was said, like, no, I'm not interested, he was still pursuing, not in a physical creepy way, more in like a uh send you a text kind of way, or like, mm -hmm. oh, what happened? Like, I thought you liked me, blah blah. Because there was things that happened that egged it on. It was a very messed up situation. He never did anything inappropriate, except for maybe like say some things that sounded like he was too involved, if that yeah, makes sense, yeah. like for that soon. Mm -hmm. But he was older, lonely. She was young. And it was like a thing where she, you know, it was very confusing. It would have been confusing for him. But at the end of the day, his job wound up looking at him like a fucking creep. It was her fault. And he wasn't a creep. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? It yeah. was really sad. It really was. Um, Yeah, I, I think like some jobs, mm -hmm. I've seen some people talking about, um, you know, like construction jobs, some of them not paying good, some of them paying good. The way I see it is that if you go into a construction job and you know nothing, you're usually not going to start getting paid that great. You're going to get paid okay. It's going to be above minimum wage. But when you can work your way up, if you learn, the thing with construction is that most people leave. Mo I've seen guys walk off the job the same day like they just can't handle the bloody knuckles the this the that but once you start learning the trade you start getting paid a lot better and then you can request more money like you can say listen this is what i'm worth and you'll usually get paid that now another benefit is that you can do side jobs and get paid very well like i've done uh jobs where i'm doing you know an hourly construction job but then on the weekends i go and pull side jobs doing the same exact job and borrowing tools maybe, or they're my own tools. But the, the thing is though, is that I took the things I, I learned from the trade job and now I'm putting them into side jobs where I'm getting paid extremely good. And there's lots of benefits to having um, a construction job. A lot of times the, the, the business will have your back in a lot of ways. Like, um, like say if your car breaks down, helping you fix it, letting you bring it into the shop, working on the shop. With me, it was always my family, but we still, so many people, so many friends of the family, so many workers. We helped so much doing so many different oh things. Um, 
Uh, Puckett Sounds says, I got in trouble for calling a hand truck a dolly. It offended a female co-worker and she complained. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's Seattle for you. You know what's hilarious is exactly what you're talking about right now. This was kind of like a, I don't know if they're called memes or what they're called, yeah. but it was a comedy skit. And it was a, like a um a construction or a contractor or whatever, and he had his uh his workers, and he was like telling his workers, "All right, these are the words we can't use anymore. We can't use uh stud, female, male, and oh, yeah. and he was going down all that. the things, headers. We can't, and literally it was like all the wording in construction was literally like erased because of that. But it was like supposed to be funny, but yeah, there's so many words that like. It doesn't even make sense to be offended to because there's a reason behind it why it's called that. Yeah, I thought his name was Puget. What? You said Pudget. Well, I don't know what I said. I uh, don't remember either. Well, if I said Seems it wrong, I apologize. Asking. I can't remember. <laughs> I had somebody earlier leave me a comment. At first. I don't. Do you remember how the comment was said? They said like <laughs> this is like the worst talking I've ever heard <laughs> in a video. Like this is the worst review ever. The talking was so unbearable. I had to turn it off or something. I had to turn. No, I had to turn the volume down and watch it without you talking. <laughs> then I had another guy say that he was complaining when I did one of those um those top fives. It's a top five, right? Yeah. The point of the top five isn't to review the knife. You can go and watch the review if you want to see more of the knife. But the guy was complaining that I flipped it too much and that I didn't show enough of the knife. But it's like I'm trying to do a top five in 11 minutes. So I'm not trying to, to do a review on the knife. If you want to see the review on the knife, go watch the review on the knife. But people get mad sometimes, man. The sensitivity. Canada's in here. Do you think that... Um. I think only like the pudget. Um, oh, okay. I I see. I don't really still know how to pronounce it. I though. think that um how you pronounce the, that? the puget sound puget sound. I thought it was like puget. Puget sound. Know. Okay. I think that the sensitivity of the world has gotten really intense since the internet has existed. Let me just explain my Everybody's theory. Out of voice. I yeah. I think that people are brave behind the keyboard, and so people are more willing to. Uh, put their opinions out there, but then the thing is, is that people who are brave in real life as well, they adapt these opinions, and I think it just has put shit out there that people wouldn't normally say, and then it's just like this thread of bullshit on the internet that is now becoming real life. Yeah, and I think that that bravery people get behind the keyboard to to like, I, I don't think, know. I, just, I think people comment on things. That they if, don't even get the full on, story. Let me just say this. If, sorry, sorry. if the world runs based off the way people perceive yeah. statements, right. words, things like that, then we are in trouble. Right. Because intent does matter. Meaning yes, does matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? People always say, like, no, intent doesn't matter. If you say something offensive, it's offensive. Well, you know what? I might start getting offensive if offended if you call me a brunette. I find that offensive. All right, but Fuck you. No, like, you what are we gonna do? Right. That's the thing, is that. We have to have that freedom of speech, freedom of talk, because otherwise you wind up wind up silence people and people aren't their self. You're actually forcing people to be fake. Uh, I wish people would grow some balls in person and stop hiding behind the damn cam. I 100% agree. And I think people wind up putting their voice involved in things that they don't have the whole story on. Like they're literally getting a one-sided story or... They're getting a miscon like just a messed up story. Like it's not even the actual story. Or they're getting a 10 second clip, right? Without seeing before and after or whatever. There's so many different things. And they wind up giving their true sense on a, you know, on something that's already a messed up, you know, way to see it can or I, hear it. What? Can I say something completely off the wall? Please. I watched this documentary this morning about the most brutal chimp colony in the world. And it, what, what, what? I see your fucking face. No, what? I'm listening. Dude. Nope. I saw the corner of your mouth I curl just, and like, you went like this. Look at me. What? You went. No, seems logical said I'm quieter in real life. I'm more opinionated, opinionated in the internet. So you got me pegged for that one. That's what I was smiling about. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I knew you were seeing, you were smiling. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I watched a documentary about the most brutal chimp colony in the world. Okay. And they started off at like 80 and they gradually expanded in 80 chimp. Oh, okay. 80. Okay. They gradually started 
taking down territory. I forget where they were and got over like 200, which is massive. That's a lot. That is massive. And right. it was one colony uh -huh. who genuinely, and oh my God. And they had like a whole social system, but it was fucked up. They would hunt other little monkeys. They would just snatch them out of the tree and just start breaking off yeah, their arms. Right, right. Like not even kill at first. Yeah, they would just right. be like, I got the monkey guys. Yeah. And then all the chimps well, would come in be like, here's an arm, here's a leg. Yeah. And like they showed it and it was so They like up. to attack genitals, eyes, fingers and and like limbs but they mainly like they they this wasn't like an attack though they were I'm just, just saying when they attack i'm saying when yeah. they attack they like whether it's a human or each other they like to attack things that they know you enjoy using or that you you use like your genitals and your fingers well so the other thing that was crazy is like in their social What's system, up, steven in their social system they did like really crazy shit like there's this one monkey who must have did something messed up and they literally started beating him. It looked yeah. like he was being jumped into a gang. Like, right, I'm not kidding you. Right. You could hear like the like the punches and stuff. Right, right, right. And they all were circled around. They didn't kill him though. They just beat the shit right, out of right, him. Right, right. And then a lot one of, of owners the monkeys, that happens to a lot of owners. Well, one of the monkeys decided to actually go comfort it after. Hmm. Which was crazy. Like yeah. they were all cool after, but he deserved a beating or something. And they were just so he deserved a beating. for something, I guess. But yeah, they yeah, were just so brutal. Over the time, they wound up killing over uh eighty monkeys in the rival gang mm -hmm. and expanded their territory actually multiple miles out, which wow. is crazy. Wow. It's an insane. Yeah, thing. Lacey just said monkeys have servants. They have social status yes. like we do. Yes, they do. Yeah. There's um, ones that can't even um mate in like the silverback gorilla right well that happens in a wolf in a, a you know what they do too. they literally will sneak behind and mate yeah. and the funny thing is sometimes the woman the woman the female chimp will have the baby from the the one she cheated with and they will both know whose kid it is and the when the main gorilla goes away the one who's really the father will act like the father right and then when right, he comes right. back it's he crazy how they know that stuff but you know like i learned in Monkey dog training gangs. because everybody's seen dogs hump right a female dog will hump a male dog will Yo, hump. shane just Humping. came in this thing and is like what's up shane? first thing he hears is everyone knows dogs hump so <laughs> anyway so um but it's a it's a dominance thing it has nothing to do with sex it has everything to do with dominance and in a, a wolf pack only the alpha and second in command are allowed to mate so all the other um you know wolves are not allowed to mate unless <laughs> if they sneak off and do it if yeah. the alpha or second in command see it they will attack them so it's the same thing that's the same way you should go in your house when you have a dog especially like an alpha male or an alpha female do not let them hump anything or each other or your legs or anything like that and number two you're the only one allowed to mate in the house be and it shows a status that the dog will understand People always put human aspects and stop doing that. People Say always put human them. emotions into a dog. And I've learned like, uh, you know, in dog training school that that's like one of the number <laughs> one failures from people training their dog is that they put human emotions on a dog rather than what the dog is really thinking or what the dog is actually really doing. Or, you know what I mean? Like, they always try to put emotions like, oh, he's he's just mad at me because of this. Or, oh, he's just getting revenge because of this. Or whatever. Like, so many different things. <sighs> um, And it's not true. As much as people want to believe that certain things are true, they're actually not. And when you learn how to train a dog the right way, it's super easy. And it's usually the opposite way that most people are taught how to train a dog. What's up, Justin? All right, let's talk about some knives for a minute. What is your favorite civivis? Now, that's hard because there's so many new ones. I want to say this. I'm very impressed with Civivis 14C28N. They have a bunch of new models out, and I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, for Sen Cut, my favorite Sen Cut is the Actium. I think that's a great, great model. I do really like this new button lock. I'm going to wait for the review to go over it completely. But Civivi's got so many great knives, it's hard to say that one is the best. I'll say it, this button lock, the size and the way it looks, I love the way this thing looks. I love the size of it. I love the grind, the blade shape, everything about it. Oh, God. But um, what, 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 I just what? see the letter C from what? Super Steel Steve. And I'm just What's up, Steve? Okay, so you guys don't know this no. yet because I haven't said it. What? I got to say something. Oh, fuck. You said the word impressed. 
My mind is fucking blown right now. Why? Does that word come from that something made such an impression on you? I don't know what you're talking you? about. What are you talking about? You said the word impress. So what? The it's word. A fucking word. And I thought on it real deep. All right. And I was like, wait, does that word come from the fact that something made such an impression on you? Yeah. That it like stuck with you and now you're just like blown away. Is that obviously? That comes from? Yep. Oh, obviously. Have you ever had that thought before in your entire life? Didn't have to I already know it. Oh no, you <laughs> so um just a heads no, up. No, not drunk. Monkey gangs and figuring out origin of words are common conversations in this household. I asked Steve if he wanted to do a podcast with us, and he said yes. So um, we're going to work our uh, schedules and figure out um, a date and a time. I'm not sure if we're going to do it live or not um, or when we're going to do it, but eventually we are going to have him on the show, which is going to be badass. Uh, can't wait yeah. for that. Oh, yeah. We're drunk. We don't actually even. Well, I, I, so I drink woman. every once in a while, but I don't really drink. I, I like like say if me and Steve did the podcast, I would have um a glass of whiskey because I have alcohol, but I don't. Impure what was the last time I drank? Um, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> What's up, Hawaii? But you know, it's not that I don't drink. I'll drink. I just don't drink often. Um, I'm don't forget the dog fighting stories. Oh yeah, John, I did say that. I I do have some dog fighting stories that we are going to talk about here in just a little bit. We're going to talk knives for a little bit, and then we'll go to some some other bullshit. We got a drive by story. We got a dog fighting story. Um, we got a bunch of uh different stories. Um, but first, I want to talk about. So, if you got you, some of you guys might not know, Steve, but Stephen the Neves. That's got to be what it's called. It's gonna be great. Um. So, you should make him a Neve so he can be Steve Neve. So, um, name. the ZT. You don't care what I'm saying. No, baby. I Steve Neve is a good name. Okay, Steve Neve. It's my dad's okay. name, except for not Neve. But his name is Steve. Right. All right, go. Okay. Done. Thank you. So, you're the, welcome. The Zero Tolerance <laughs> 0450, the one we got, had a shit heat treat. I'm talking yeah. about it was so bad. That's yeah. 35 VN, and it was really, really bad. When I started sharpening it, I found out that it felt like Play-Doh on the stone. And it got, it was really bad. I could never get it worked out. Steve on his Neves podcast. Steve on his Neves. Yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I wound up sharpening another one that's actually kind of around the same number as mine. I think this one's a little bit newer. And you're turning me. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was like, off in the abyss. Okay. How do you feel better? I feel more included, yeah. Okay, so now, after sharpening this one, the heat tree was a little bit better than mine, but not much better. Like, it's it's still, it's not the best. I could tell sharpening it, it just does not take that nice, keen edge. Even at a toothy edge, it just won't take that. Like, it's sharp. Obviously, it's really sharp. It'll shave. It'll go through hair. But it just doesn't take that really keen edge. Now, mine was really bad like i mean like it doesn't even make sense how bad it was then i sharpened another one this one is the 0470 and this one's in for sharpening now this one's in 20 cv so it's not s35 vm but it did feel a little bit better than the 0450 but this is also a newer knife than this one this is an older model it's one of their older ones the serial number but it just shows that some of them older zts man their heat treats were not good at all and some of them were just total crap and i did hear that they realized it or whatever and want up fixing it but be careful with some of the old zts if you go to buy one mark did you get it Thank you, bud. I appreciate that. Thank you so Whoa, much. What is it? It's a, it's a cheers of coffee. That was that aggressive. The, that as scared hell. the shit out of me. Well, his kind of splashes a little, so I had to get the little going. So, um, the uh, the other day I did the the top five fourteen C twenty eight on knives and top somebody, five fourteen C twenty eight knives. Somebody brought up the the Kershaw Naco. Mm -hmm. Which I have, mm -hmm. and mine is to the point. It's a hundred percent locked up. It's it's been used a lot, right? But I didn't really ab 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe some people would consider it abuse, but I was kind of thinking, you know, about the hard use versus abuse. And, you know, you have like two different <laughs> kinds of hard use, right? Like the hard use where you're prying, and scraping and smashing and hitting and, mm. you know, using it to knock stuff out. And um, <laughs> and then you have the just the hard use where it's like your your only knife, so you use it every single day, constantly. You're constantly putting pressure on the lock bar, squeezing it. You don't have another knife, which I had other knives, but I used it for a work knife for a while. And you would think I abused the shit out of it, but it's just I used it a lot. Me what too. baby? What are you gonna say? I feel like you have something. <laughs> What Never. I got the Kaiser Sheepdog extra large Monday, stropped it for 30 seconds with nano cloth, totally and it will tear. I believe that that sometimes happens. I've had that from a um, are the button lock elementums out? A couple spider go, they're not out yet, but you know what? I seen on Knife Center, I seen that new sheepdog from Concept. Um, I think you what? might be able to get it right now. I'm not 100%. Maybe it's just like a pre-order thing. Hi, I it want a really bun like Elementum. You can have a sheepdog. No, I just said so they're I'm not like, out yet. They're not out I yet. I know, and you're like, but you can have a sheepdog. Because those weren't supposed to come out yet. So I think they I know, I they're just they so dropped. different. That's I think they explaining. did drop. I seen a, a couple other knives that um, surprised me that I didn't know so were out yet. It looks extra large. Any of you a fan of the PM2? I like the PM2. Um, especially in K390, I do have the I one. I feel like the PM2 is kind of like an episode of Simpsons. It's good and everything, but you just have seen it so much that you're like, hmm. Well, yeah, but that's coming from somebody who hasn't used one. I have used a PM2. No, you haven't. I literally have pictures of me using a PM2. So, um, the PM2, it's yes, wild. it's great. I do like it in a, uh, a good steel, like K390. Um, I'm... I was testing and working with the Warncliffe version, and I'm going to do the review very soon um, on whether or not it's worth it or, you know, if it really doesn't matter. Because, you know, it's a, it's a Warncliffe, so, but you can still do utility cuts with this one. So is it really that much better? We'll find out during the review. I did bring it to work a couple of times. I did sharpen it, and I always like or at least lately, man, I've been really impressed with um, yeah. spider coats. He treats. You know how I made that reference to the Simpsons just now? Yes. I got so irritated at work the other day because I made like an uh, analogy, or at least I thought it was an analogy, and my friend literally stopped me and fucking mansplained that um, what I said was actually not an analogy because an analogy is when you use the words like or something or other, and that what I did was a metaphor. Shit fucking. Metaphorically speaking. Me. Yeah, well, more actually literally speaking, because it really happened. Core G says, I'd like to get that new PM2 blade, but they are out of stock. I'm sure they will come out with either a different color or a different blade or blade steel eventually. I'm not sure how soon, but the PM2 Charmin is a damn Ultra good knife. PM2. It really is. It's very tough. It's very easy to deploy, get back in the pocket. The clip works good. Even though it's not a deep carry clip, Fucking you can Eric. get a deep carry. And it does work <laughs> really good. Simile. I like the PM2. I think it's a great user. A great work knife. Not a mansplain. I was being so sarcastic on the mansplain thing. I think my view on that whole situation is why we only have 30 whatever likes. Because I don't believe in a wage gap. <laughs> you know, um, I was uh, talking the other day about... Yes, it. I did, Mark. It's great. Sorry, go. It's funny that I was talking on the last live about I'd love to see Chris Reeve knives um, collaborate with another knife company like Chirogorov or Medford or something, right? Something. And then yesterday I seen a damn Chirogorov um, Chris Reeve knives, but it was basically just the Haitian with um, Chris Reeve knives um, milling, I guess you could say, or their design on the scales. So... That's not what I was talking about. What I was talking about was more of a collaboration where they actually design a knife around each other or together. That was just one of Cheryl's knives that had their print on there. Um, once I threw a... Drew Becker says, I once threw a $1,000 fly rod into the rocks to jump in the river and get my PM2 I dropped. Did you get it? Did you? Yeah, that's the question. You didn't answer. I'm guessing. Why wouldn't you say, finish it off with whether or not I mean, you got it? he said he did that to get it. So yeah, I'm so I'm, I'm guessing got he got it. it. Yeah. Um, Matt Lambert says, 
I saw that sure OCRK. It, it's honestly a letdown. Could have been great, but that thing was ugly. Yeah, I think the the pattern looked okay. It's not my style. I wouldn't really like it, but I'd like to see a collaboration where it's not already a model that that company has, where they actually collaborate and make a model. I think that would be way more way more better. Um. You always leave everything on the last comment. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Leave well, it on it, it's like before? I can't read it then when the new comments come in. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean it's not cycling. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It just stays on the last one. Um, so I was um I was asked um well actually um who the hell was it? Um oh man, I can't even think of the channel now. I'm such an asshole right now. Anyways, we were talking about convexed um edges and V grinds. And, you know, I did that video on why people are getting, um, you know, like after they sharpen their edge, they try to use it and it's getting damaged really fast. They're not getting any improvements with edge retention. And, hey, Neves family, 154 CM, toothy edge, best grit. Yes, um, I'm ha uh, 600 grit. I'm having a hell of a time with my Emerson. I either get a crazy toothy edge or a mirror polish super smooth. Any advice? Don't put a mirror edge on it. 154 CM does not take a good mirror edge. I'm not saying there's not any 154 CM that won't take a good mirror polish, but most, mostly, all put this way, any 154 CM I've ever sharpened, especially CPM 154, does not take a good polish. Yeah, it looks good. You know, it'll look really good, but it's slick. If there's no bite in it, you 154 CM, in my opinion, does really good around 600 grit, 600 to 800 grit is the best for it. That's in my opinion. Um, I normally don't go over a thousand grit with 154 CM, and I usually don't even go close to that. 600 grit is what I like to put on it. Um, what do you do? I it just happens sometimes. Oh, wait, did the computer did it? Yeah. <laughs> Hoping the Benchmade comes out with more mini bug outs, color options, and the custom mini bug outs. You can dye the white too. one technically. I know it's annoying to say that. Like, you're paying that much for a knife. You don't want to have to, to put work into it, but you can. I almost just dumped that. Steve says he keeps everybody humble. <laughs> what a sweet fellow. Yeah, because he fucking disliked our video. <laughs> Kara seems like the type of gal that gives Doritos to a stranger when they seem like they might like to eat some Doritos. Yo, that Don't is Don't be selfish, so people, if you have an extra Dorito. You know give what's some funny as hell stranger. is I just bought these super expensive organic raspberries at work, and I started eating them, and for no fucking reason, I left them behind for people to eat. Yes. And I really wanted those raspberries, but I felt like they would enjoy raspberries. I feel like you're getting the wrong impression about it. The other day, I was trying to give a dollar to a homeless guy, and she refused. So Why are you talking about? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Savant, thank you very much, bud. Thank you. I appreciate that, like man. Really thank smart. you. Thank you. He's probably really smart. His last name is Savant. Savant. So that means no. That's like a name. That's like a, a thing. Is, is it a thing? Yeah, it's a word. Uh, what did you just do? I have no idea. Oh lord. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, that sharpening video really helped me out. Thanks, Sharon. So, um, I I got a lot of sharpening videos, guys. If you guys ever um have questions, look in my playlist first and see if you can't find the answer there because I. <laughs> Um, talk about a lot of tips and tricks. I answer a lot of questions. Some of the videos, even though they're on one subject, they answer a lot of subjects in that video. It's just I can't, it's not like I can put the title and talk about everything I'm going to talk about in the video. So the title might be one thing, but there's a hundred other things ex explained in there. But convex edges are still great edges. And if you have trouble holding your angle, right? It's very easy to do a convex edge. I'm going to do a sharpening video doing a convex edge because I know the majority of people do a convex edge. A lot of people don't even realize they're doing a convex edge. They think they're doing a V grind, but it's most likely a convex edge. But there's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're working up to doing a really good V grind. And a lot of times it can be very beneficial. But knowing how to, to make sure, one, your bevel is done correctly from heel to tip and 
that your grip pattern is even and your burr. If you can follow that, it doesn't matter if you're doing a convex or a V grind. If you can learn the grip pattern and the burr um, and how to deburr really good, you will have a very good edge. And you can practice that with your lowest grit before you ever go to your next grit. You know, make sure that like just because you get a burr doesn't mean that you should flip now. You want to make sure your entire edge bevel, it's the grip pattern is covered. Don't go on the stone and then you got a burr on the other side and you think, okay, it's done. Now it's ready to flip. That's not true. You want to follow the grip pattern first, then the burr. Grip pattern first, then the burr. Where is the rock sun? Well, have we got 40 yet? Yeah. Oh, Rocky. No. Stedman. What? Stedman. Oh, I, I'm sorry, old Stedman. Yeah, he's an old man. Let's see what we can see. Gonna I got that new uh, CRK grease. I'm going to wind up putting it on this thing because I know this thing will get so hey, much smoother with that grease. Russ gave his wife those leggings and she loves them. Awesome. I actually got a new pair of those same leggings, but apparently they also have different kinds and they are equally as nice. And I love them, and they are my favorite. Don't check me. this out. Look at how smooth the USMC fighter is getting. It's getting super duper smooth, guys. Oop, that was my fault. What the Harsey gets no love? The Harsey gets Technically, love. Technically, you're not supposed to have the Harsey because you did bad on your. Court. No, you said I didn't I know. Said, I asked you. I, I said, did know. I win I or not? Technically. Technically, I won. I did a little bit bad, but I didn't do half bad. But if I was being You harsh, said half bad. If I was following the rules I initially set, you wouldn't be touching that heart seat. You said half bad. What? This thing's breaking in, like, really nice. I can feel how much smoother it's getting. Like, I can Thank you, easily slap it down. Slap it in. And flick it out. And thumb and reverse flick it. Shush. Super smooth. That, that video's slap coming. Slap the base. Slap at the base. That that video is coming really soon, guys. I just wanted to break it in first. I don't like if you get a Medford, right? And it's still really stiff. How much reviewing have you really done with it? If it's still, you know, stiff as can be, you, it should get start getting broken in before you really, you really do a review on it. What's up, EDC Journey? What is up, bud? Yeah. Me and EDC Journey were actually talking about the same thing, kind of about um, deburring and stropping, over stropping. We were talking about a little bit something different, but pretty much the same thing that I was just talking about. Actually, I was talking about it with a few people. Did you see that guy's hard use video? Where the hell did it go? You just. I know it always does that to me. Drew Becker says, Did you see that hard use video of that Medford? No, I did not. Who did it? I did not see that. I am sorry. El Ch did I just see El Chapo in here? Oh, El Chapo's in here. What? Definitely go follow El yeah. Chapo on Instagram. If you want to, put your Instagram in the comment section um, with the ad symbol so people um, can go and follow it on Instagram. What? what? Remember that when um, yeah, do. Scream does that in that movie and then they tell him to do a rap? freestyle and he's like slice them dice them and he starts like actually cutting the people up barely oh <laughs> i'm sorry I, I i know what you're talking about but i barely remember it wallaby put the link to those leggings in uh the the comments thank you thank you hey they're really nice though, for real what what was sharp as shit edc journey that uh it worked in other words oh what i said worked awesome good good I hope it did. It should. Russ um, says you have to share something. I got to share something? Yeah. That. What? Jared, be sure you share the package. Oh, yeah. I definitely will. I definitely will. I told her something that was in there already. You didn't even tell me nothing was coming. I told you about the jerky. Well, I didn't tell you did what it. was else was in there, but I told you about jerky. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did, too. Um, why do you have There's those another leggings? Jared. Oh my god, he spells it G J J E. -R -E -D. I'm sorry, J E R E D. That is crazy. 
That's how most people spelled it. No, they most people spell J A R E D. That way too. Mm-hmm. Or J A R R O D. I've seen it every I've way but my way. I've only seen it my way one time, and the guy was on Forged and Fire. Yeah, and he, and he lived town. Yeah, and he lived same right. Town. Well, not it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same town. Yeah, same town. Um, I'm gonna do a giveaway. The EDC Journey says I'm gonna do a giveaway at 500. I think. When did you guys do it at a milestone for giveaways? I think we did one at 100. We did a lot of them. And we did them like every other hundred or every hundred. Like at the beginning, I feel like we did them honestly a like lot. every 50. No, it was every hundred. Was it? I thought you did one nope. for 250. Nope, every you hundred. Sure? Nope, every hundred. Okay. It, then it was like one, two, three, four, five. But like we were just we doing skipped it. we skipped a couple, but just because we were yeah. moving fast. But then five hundred, and then I think after that we started spacing them out more to like every I don't know. <sighs> then the Patreon happened and oh. um I thought about taking that knife that I was talking about earlier, the knockout, and uh just abusing the shit out and seeing if I could Knocking break it. it. Out. <laughs> Well, after now that it's, a, it's 100% locked up, just seeing if I could just break that thing. Um, uh, Joe says he just noticed the caffeine dealer. I knew. It's because that's what I do. <sighs> giveaway. Uh, EDC Journey says he's going to do a giveaway of 500. Oh, sorry, sorry. I see, the, I see the end now of you talking about it. Um, don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. What did you feel the condescending this? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. freaking so absolutely. Um oh, so since there are a couple channels probably in here, and there's 73 people in here, so I guarantee there's a couple channels listening. Um, I just want to say if a company ever contacts you and asks you if you want to check out their product, you know, and you do, you know, whatever kind of product it is, doesn't matter what it is, and they start asking you. To do specific things, deny that. Don't not okay. Let me be clear. Don't deny it. Be clear with what you're willing to do. Thank you, thank you, Marvin. Hey, you. Woo! Thank you, bud. Thank you so much. And hey, hey, don't come up faster. Where's the glasses? At? I don't have glasses, but hey, you. That was my glasses. That was our glasses. Thank you, bud. I appreciate that. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, or what I'm specifically saying, is that companies will try to contact and they'll ask, you know, like if they can send you a product for you to review. And you might say, yeah, you know, I'll check it out. But then they'll be like, okay, well, can you do five Instagram posts and three on your uh, your profile thing? And then, uh, and then just right there, specifically tell them what you do. Because they that's not how it works you do you the way you do it right that's the point of your channel your channel isn't for companies to tell you how to advertise their product you do you best right so like um recently i had one get a hold of me and they tried asking something like that and i just downright told them like no this is how i do it i'll do but then they I'll, said yes didn't they? yeah absolutely they did because that's the point is that i the reason why you have your followers, subscribers, or whatever, is because you do something a certain way, right? You don't shill out or, you know, whatever. Because, because okay, put it this way. What if it's a shit product, right? And then you agree and say, yes, I'll do five Instagram posts. So now if you do, you're doing it on top of a shit product and making it look good. So like what I say is, this is what I do. I will review it. And if it's a good product, I'll advertise it on Instagram. If it's not, then people are going to find out through the review because I'm going to, when I do the review, they're going to find out. Um, and it's better to just be upfront and just cut it off right there and tell them what you're going to do with it and what you won't do with it or what you might possibly do and where you like, what draws the line because they, uh, I've had a few companies now and you guys already know about this one that I agreed to. Right. And, um, and then now it's going to get a horrible review and the company's probably going to be pretty upset, but that's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is other companies and whether it's a good product or not, you might know it's going to be a good product, but most good companies, like I've never had a good knife company send me something and tell me or ask me to do something. Now, if they just say something like, Hey, 
can you throw the link in your description? That's different. That's not what I'm talking about. Or if they're like, hey, do you think you could possibly show um something off in the video? That's not what I'm talking about. That's like, uh, yeah, of course, you know, of course, I'm, you know, I want to advertise the product the best way I can. But by asking you to do a certain amount of videos or where you can put the video or, um, or how to do your video, like right there, you should know that's a red flag and tell them what you will and won't do with the product because you can get in over your head with a product that you might not support in the end and you've already gotten into something with me i kind of take it a little serious like i guess some people could just be like no nope, i'm breaking the deal now i'll send you it back if you don't want me to do it yada yada um can you read the script can you what is that what does that mean can you read the script about the knife what do you, what does that mean, Poncho? I'm curious what that means. Can you read the script about the knife? I think that's why Nick Shabazz has that whole spiel at the start of every video to show a transparent, unbiased review. Yeah, and I do that too. When when uh, companies ask me to, to review something, I always tell them. I say, listen, I just, you know, rev the bat. I'm honest with all my reviews. I talk about the good and the bad of the product. And recently, like with the one, I just told them straight up. I said, listen, if you're not confident in the product, you might not want to send it because if I do, I said, I basically said, if you are confident, then send the product because I'll review it. And if I do like it and I support it, then I will put it on Instagram. I'm not going to put it on another platform. If I just got done, you know, cramping on it, because I don't think that that justifies what I just said, it winds up making it to where now, you know, it makes it seem like I'm, I'm saying the product is good. I think he wants you to share what they wanted you to. Oh, got it. I got you. What? What? I got it. What? I got this shit. Oh, um, what you tell me? I'm gonna. Uh, the what they said. To you. No, why would you do that? Don't do that. I can't read the message. No, they want to laugh at it. No, we're not doing. Oh, that you're still company. doing something. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't do that. You just said. I didn't say the name of the company or anything. I'm I know. Doing yeah, don't. I do wasn't going to say the name of the company. Well, don't read the message. I told them basically what the message said. Um. Fine. But it's just. It's just. It a, wasn't. I honestly thought nice. you were not overreacting nice. to the message. Actually, you think I did? Clear. Oh yeah, I took offense to it. I think that they were more just like, "Hey, we have this product, no, no that's and not how it works. we want to know if you can advertise it here, and nope. blah blah blah." Like, I don't. Mm -hmm. And then, like, that's not how. I don't think there was anything wrong with you saying, no. "Yeah, I'll only do that if I like it." No, no. The way the way it was was, and I'm not trying to out any company right now. I understand a company wants to get the product out there as much as possible. What I didn't like was that I all we we run the channel how we run it, right? Don't say like, hey, I can you do five Instagram posts and put three stories up of this product? Like, like the, if you want me to do the video or want me to review it, I'm gonna review it how I review it. It's not like like I'm doing you a favor by reviewing the product already. If I don't, I have to like the product first. I have to see the product first. I'm not going to agree to something on a product I have not seen yet. If I haven't seen it yet. So to me, that was a little uh, overstepping your boundaries. You're asking me if I'll review it. Yes. Send it. I'll check it out. Obviously, if I like the product, I'm going to talk about it, right? That's the thing. Your product should speak for itself. And most good companies do that. They let the product speak for itself, not say, you know, like try to get you to agree to a bunch of things you're going to do before you've ever even seen it. That's why I felt like it was overstepping the boundaries because you're not going to tell me how to run my channel with your product or how I'm going to advertise it. Obviously, like, like when we advertise a product on YouTube, right? We do it a certain way. It, um, it's kind of like, like if I, if, you know, they ask me like, oh, can you do five YouTube videos and this and that? No, like, no. I, I, what I'll do is I'll review it. I'll oh, do my unboxing like I always do because that's what I do. I'll do my unboxing. I'll do my good and bad review. And then I will feature it in other videos later if it's credible, if it's good. Like if, like, say if I did like a top five, right? If it's not a top five, it's not going in a fucking top five if it's not a um a good enough product for me to say hey man i totally 
think this is worth the money, then I'm not going to do that. Do you know what I mean? So you can't get me, you shouldn't try to get me to agree to do that before I've ever even seen the product. That's all I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just don't know that it's necessarily fair to just judge a company just because they're putting out what they want I didn't out. judge them. I, mean, I haven't seen the product. I'm though. saying I don't think it's fair to do that, though, if they're just putting out their end goal. Um, it's not like they said, um, you can't respond, you can't put your input. They just said, hey, this is ultimately what we're looking for. Are you interested? Yeah. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Unless they're like, hey, we'll pay you $500 to just put this directly on your page and say nice things. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It is a rabbit's butt. But I butt. wouldn't do that, though. You, it is a rabbit's butt. It is a rabbit's butt. Um, it's, a good, it's a good luck rabbit. You guys thought rabbit's feet were good luck? You guys are doing rabbit's it all wrong. Butt. Rabbit's I'll ass. I'll tell you a story. My uh, hound dog once pulled a literal beagle or a literal rabbit butt out of a bush. Like, I'm talking fluffy tail and legs. That's all that was left of it. She right. found it. Literally a rabbit's butt. Yeah. When, she wanted to eat that. When shit, I so got that, that house... um. I brought my dog there. It was the first time, and this place was overgrown. No, they did not give him a script for the video. Hold on. Things are getting twisted around. Oh, hell no. I no, would never they take didn't. a script. They didn't. Never, they were saying, never... can we hear the script, like what they told you? But they didn't say that at all. It was just like, um, no, they were can, just asking like, this me. This is what we want. Ultimately. They were trying to get me to agree to a certain amount of Instagram posts and putting it on my story and of YouTube videos and stuff like that. And that's not something I'm willing to do when I haven't seen the product. And I'm not, you don't get to ask me how many to do. That's not how this works. How it works is I'll review the product. And if it's a good product, then obviously I will show it off more and more. Um, I'll do a good and bad review on it. That's, you know, an unboxing and a good and bad review. If it's a good enough product, I'll show it on Instagram. And I'll do Instagram videos on it. And then if it's really good, I'll show it off a bunch more times because it's that good of a product. If it's not, I won't. Like, I'll just do the good and bad review. But you, I, you can't ask me to do something that on a product that I haven't seen yet. And also t try to tell, like, try to ask me to do it a certain way too. Like it's my channel. So I'm going to show it off how I think is best fit. Now, let me just be clear. I always want to do the best or make it the best interest or whatever you want to say, the best way for that company. Um, I know it's not like I ever want to get something and then not do it the best possible way. I think that would be good for that company. Pants is a beagle. Good for him. I want one. Oh, I wanted to finish that story about, about gear up. So um, I was moving into this house and Bang. it was completely overgrown. The house had to be completely rehabbed. And there was a, um, an in-ground pool that was all shot and messed up and I had to redo it. Well, when I got to the house, my dog comes out with a complete carcass a deer carcass comes out and she's like running with it and she, i mean a whole spine and legs are dragging and i'm like ah oh, fuck think about how nasty that is so i got it got rid of it right then she comes out with another carcass i get rid of that then another one it wound up becoming like four or five carcasses i'm talking about big full body carcasses because coyotes were using that property to hunt and eat their their prey uh, that's the same place i was talking about with the coyotes that got the dogs same exact place before i moved in they were using that yard that was overgrown to to chase their prey in corner because it was at a dead end so it literally was fenced in so they could chase prey into the corner and also they could also just bring it in there too if they caught it outside um, I'm just gonna say this all instead of typing it. Yes, they do uh wander when smelling something. They call it uh uh what do they call it? Uh nose deaf or something like that. There's a word for it where they can't hear you, literally can't hear you anymore because the scent in their nose is so strong that they're following. They're pretty much always gonna be on leash dogs until they get a bit older. Yeah, and they're, don't care. They're the, there's only two breeds that were taught in dog training school that cannot be trusted off leash. Huskies and hounds. Huskies, not huskies and beagles to be exact hounds can be to an extent because this is the thing is that certain hounds were bred for us to follow and that's why they follow their nose and their their ears drag the ground and it pulls the scent up to their nose they're made to to follow that scent above all humans follow them um a husky 
same thing. They mush. They pull stuff. We follow them, and they have a very um wild nature to them, right? Other dogs were bred for certain duties and tasks along the side of a human for hundreds of years. So they are easier to get, like say a bull mastiff, right? They were um, bred for hunting poachers so and for guarding. So that no dog's one. instinct is to protect and guard. So it's very easy to get that dog not to run off. There's a lot of dogs that are very easy to train, but any dog, you could train recalls and you can train certain things, but the two breeds that can't be a hundred percent trusted. I'm not saying they can't be, and you can't get it to happen. I'm saying a hundred percent trusted is those two breeds. Super Steel Steve says, still waiting for Medford to unblock me so I can ask him to send me a knife so I can pry a manhole cover with it. Should I feel like this knife would be a good manhole prior? This thing's pretty thick. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I doubt he'll do that. Um, <laughs> I um, why did he? You don't know why That's he blocked you, huh? I don't, man. You would think of all people that would be the guy that wouldn't block somebody, right. because he, like he's all about freedom of speech, this and that, blah 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 blah. Maybe it was I, an accident. Maybe Steve was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> So is he. That's true. That's what I mean. That's why it's like, how can you blame somebody? I don't know. Who knows what happened? Maybe it was an accident. You're right. Um, this one right here. This is my favorite method right now. The Slim Midi. Oh, I love this thing. This thing is so so sweet. Um, I might have to cut out of here a little early. I'm gonna fall asleep. Okay, go ahead, baby. Don't worry about it. I'm tired. You're okay. We still got dog fights to I talk have about. A rough um, day. We got a bunch of stuff still to talk about. So if you want to go to sleep, it, I love about. that picture of SpongeBob. I remember that episode. Why don't you read the comment? I think people overlook. I already read this, but I think people overlook the purpose of a lot of dogs. It's hard because you don't know what you will get. But mutts are usually the best way if you just want a family dog. Yeah, but it's good to know what they are because yes. there's definitely mixtures that can be... You don't do good together. You don't know which yeah. one you're going to get, which personality ha! you're going to get. That's true. And <laughs> um, sometimes mutts are great. It just depends on the breeds that are in that mutt. But you know, it's like 90% of what people call a mutt. Like They'll be like, oh, it's a beagle pit bull mix. And then it's yeah. a Labrador Great Dane like, There was those like, one people they that don't got know. that chihuahua on that thing we were watching. They're like, we were told it was a chihuahua, but then it was like 27 pounds. Right. Right, and it was a, a an Alaskan. Um, what was it? It was. It was part Chihuahua. But Chihuahua was... and Alaska. Oh, oh yeah. Like um, no, no, no. It was uh, um the the American Husky or whatever the little tiny oh, ones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. I. What's uh, up, Spanky? I am gonna go do something. Okay, baby. Where go I, it doesn't matter if my eyes keep go shutting. Ahead. You're fine. My espresso machine broke and somebody called off and I had a rough day. Okay. Go. Get the fuck out of here. This chair is comfy. Well, don't take it with you because I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you give me this one? You never give me this one. Because you're my baby. You're my there bag. have been other you're nights that bag. I'm like, can I have that chair? And you're like, no. You get it. Almost, you get chair. it almost every time. The only time you don't get it is when you walk in halfway through. And I'm already in it. But, I think we can rewind the videos. And exactly. See. Yes, we can. This you're is right. your chair. Though, you're right? absolutely right. No, it's your chair. A little American Eskimo dog. Bye. Yeah, they have um American uh, Husky, or I think that's what it's called. It's the it's the the small Huskies. They're like a miniature Husky, even though technically there's no relation to the Husky. It's just what they call it because that's what it looks like. There's a lot of dogs like that. Like um, I think um a Chihuahua. I think it's a Chihuahua. Chihuahua, Chihuahua is like is, um, is a very close relation to um. I think that's the way it goes to a wolf than most <laughs> dogs. I will correct his pronunciations from around the she corner. Does. Don't you She's woman explaining. Let me say something though. Can I ask get, you a serious question? Get the fuck out of Let here. Let me ask you a question wow. though. If you didn't know that you were saying a word completely fucking wrong, I don't care. I would want to know that. You don't want to know that? Like if I was at work and I'd I was say, like, I'd say, do you know what I mean? And then they'd if say, I yeah, was at and work say, and well, I'm like, if I was at work and I'm like, can did you want a laddie? Yeah, no, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't, gonna, wanna like, I wouldn't want to run around. I would want someone to be like, it's a long time. You're right. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to run around calling politics politics. So yeah. Right. 
That's how you be sounding. I know my politics. I mean, you kindly finally, or you sort of finally stopped the, what's that one thing? The, um. All right. No, I want to figure make it fun of me. It's go. not making fun. I know, but I'm standing here. So. The, the one uh, that you used to always say that, and we would always say it like, again because it was like funny it was like uh, fuck i'll remember i'll yell all right, at you. all right all right yeah make sure you get me before the, the end of this I will. thanks baby Cheers. thanks baby you're so sweet you're such a sweetheart i love you i love you um all right since we're already talking about dogs so first i want to talk about dog bites and then we'll talk about dog bites what are you doing i'm thinking you don't have to think I about just it. Think it's just you, bothering you just, me. You just want to stab me in the back? It's just bothering you just want to talk me. Shit. No, it's just I want to think of the word. Yeah, yeah. It's not a word. It's like a phrase. What if you embarrass me in front of everybody? It's not. You say it all the time. I don't care. And then I'm you, 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 you like re-say it in a funnier way because you know it's fucked up. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about, but I believe you. Um, So, I've been bitten many times by dogs. More better. Oh, more better. More and Mo then you better. Say Mo better. All right. You oh, I Mo thought Mo you were better. gonna say the one where I say. Um, and that's I'm like, yeah, I guess that, that's the better. same thing. Yeah, more. right, right. More or better. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's all I was trying to think. That was a normal better. word with me growing up, though. Everybody said more better, and I never knew like that. That was a bad way to say it. And then she told me, and it was just kind of stuck in my vocabulary. Yeah. But I'm better with it though now, and I correct myself, guys. You, you, they hear me all the time. Correct myself. I'll say. More and now say, I mean, just better, you know. Yeah. His social media person is probably a baby backed bitch. Um, oh man, I hate when the thing does that. Ask her if she wants to buy a vowel. <laughs> um, so you know what, I don't buy? what? Fuck you. all right, um, <laughs> so dog bites. So then we'll get into dog fights. Um, so where, like I grew up, there was a lot of uh, people that, you know, would fight dogs and uh, do even horrible things to dogs. And I hate it. I really hate it. I love, I'm an animal lover. Um, I love dogs, you know. Um, so even, even though I'm an animal lover doesn't mean I don't like to hunt or anything like that. I think that that's actually a better way to love animals is to be a hunter and stuff. But anyways, that's not the subject we're talking about. Getting bit by a dog. So I've been bit multiple times by a dog. My sister's even got a scar on her face still from when she was a kid. She got bit in the face by my uncle's dog. First time I got bit by a dog was in the fucking ass. Um, there was a dog and my dad walked up to it. And, you know, because of his body language, the dog didn't go after him. And, you know, I'm a child or younger. So, you know, I don't know. Not, you know, at this point, like how to do my body language. Now, today, the dog wouldn't bite. You know, I, I walked up to many, many aggressive dogs and, you know, that would bite more other people, but they wouldn't bite me just because of my body language. A lot of it has to do with your body language. Anyway, so when I went up to the dog, though, my dad told me it's not going to bite you. Well, it did the charge and bark thing. And I turned and went to run, you know, and it's on a chain. Well, it got me before the end of the chain right on the ass and uh, ripped my pants and everything. But, uh, but no, I've been bit in the arm. Um, I got bit in the face one time. The tooth went through here and then went like, like on the side of my nose. It just like clamped me. That was a, a Malamute that did that big ass Malamute. Um, I got in his face and now I know today that I, it was my fault because when you take your head and you put it above a dog's, okay? So, like, say if this is a dog's face, if I go up above his face and I put it very close over the top of it, that is the same thing as, like, two people, two humans, as me getting in your face and pushing you or me getting in your face and threatening you. It's the same thing to a dog. So, basically, I was challenging that dog in his language, in dog language. I know that now. Because I, you know, because I'm a dog whisperer, but back then I didn't. And I went to, I think, kiss the dog on the nose, but I went over the top and the dog was new to the environment. Somebody, they, the family had lost their dog and they got a new dog and it was like two years old. And when I went to give it a kiss, that thing went, pow, got me right in the face, fucked me up real good. But, um, but I've been bitten by a lot of little dogs. I've been bitten by big dogs, but, um. Lots of dog bites, actually. 
Um, not too many since I've been a trainer, only a couple, but I knew it was coming when it happened. They were mostly smaller dogs, um, you know, like trying to like teach the dog better behaviors because they were aggressive. Um, but now, you know, like with bigger dogs, you know, what type of situation to put yourself into and whatnot. Um, Jeremy says, I'm glad you found each other. All three of our dogs are rescue dogs from fighting. Yeah, I've rescued many dogs, many dogs from fighting. Um, I saved a dog one time. They got shot uh, multiple times. I pulled the bullets out of it, um, cleaned it up. I told the story before where I found a dog. My dad actually found it, but in the woods and somebody had fought it, let pit bulls tear. It was a pit bull, but it was a young pit bull. And they basically used them as bait and it was ripped apart, but the scars were healed. So it had scars all over and they threw it in a cage that was smaller than it. And it was so emaciated that um, I actually couldn't even give it water at first, like, or at least a bowl of water. I had to give it very slow. Otherwise it would put it through shock. If you ever find a dog that's completely emaciated and if you lift their skin and it stays up, like see how mine goes back down when I pinch it, if it stays up, that means it's completely dehydrated. So at that point, you do not want to give it water, like just give it a bunch of water. You give it a sip, just a little bit, because what will happen is it'll start chugging water and it'll put the dog into shock. So what you want to do is give it just a little bit. And when you give it food, only start with a couple bites. Let it get through the system, then give it a few more bites, and that's how you get them back going. So that's what I had to do. But the dog's teeth was covered in its own shit because what it was doing was eating its own feces because it didn't have anything else to eat. And it was so sad. But save that dog. Dog was great. I trained it. Um, it wound up going out for adoption, and I made sure that it would pass the test that the adoption thing would put it through because they have these tests that they put them through and they can't pass the tests. They put the dog down because they, you know, it's not fit for adoption. So I made sure it was fit for adoption. Um, I've done that many times actually with dogs, um, train them to, to pass that test. Now there has been many dogs that couldn't because they were just, they could, but it would have taken so much effort. Um, and, like I, I met this, I had this one dog, um, that dog that got shot, that dog that got shot, that dog had been fought for so long and it probably lost a fight or went after somebody and they shot him. I don't know what happened. I found him shot. Um, he was shot in the, like the hip and the leg, uh, by a 22 and, um, pulled the bullets out. And I mean, it's sad, but that dog was so and, and I hate to, I don't want to blame it on the dog. I don't, I don't want nobody to get me wrong because it's a hundred percent the people's fault, but that dog was extremely, extremely dangerous. And I mean, like beyond dangerous, that dog would see anything furry or any kind of animal and would immediately want to fight. And, um, it, it was dangerous, right? It was too dangerous where I was trying to train dogs and, you know, get them set up for adoption, I couldn't bring it to. I couldn't have it around the other dogs and kids and children. And I just couldn't do that. So um, I did bring it to a facility, you know, to let them handle it. There was not much I could do for that one. Um, I don't know what they did with it. Most likely they did put it down which is sad. It is very sad, but it was just a common thing. I grew up with lots of people that did that type of stuff when I was younger. You know, I didn't, um, you know, I wasn't as smart as I am now and not that I liked it or anything like that, but it was normal. It was a normal thing. People fought dogs. People had fighting dogs, the whole neighborhood. I knew lots of people that bred and raised their dogs to fight. Uh, and yeah, so you see a lot of crazy shit with dogs. But, um, but yeah, it is horrific and it's sad and it's, it's no people, people are savages and especially in certain types of neighborhoods where that's what they get them for. They try to make money off of them. Um, you know, some of them wind up doing really good and end up becoming a fucking champion breed and then they breed them and they sell them for big bucks. Like it, it's a lot of, it's a big money thing. Um, that people get into.
but it's it can be very sad though you know um especially for the dog because certain breeds like pimples they want to make a human so happy they're willing to do anything like i've read stories you know because original originally pimples were bred for bull baiting what they do is they'd hang on the nose of a bull and however long, you know to like see how long they could do it while the bull is just thrashing them and some of them would come out with punctured lungs, broken ribs, broken legs, and still hanging on uh, because they, you know, th that's just how their instincts. So they have that big drive to satisfy a person. If they know it makes you happy, they will do it. Hawaii Knife and Gear says, same here, just with chickens. Yeah, that's big down south, too. Um, not as far as you down south, but I just mean like Louisiana, uh, Alabama, shit like that, Mississippi. Lots of uh, chicken fighters down there. Absolutely. Um, Greyhound racing is about is about extinct now, too. I used to go to the dog track all the time. But, yeah, um, I mean, I don't think that's as bad as this. But, uh, but it is kind of sad, like, after a couple years when those dogs aren't racing as good no more, now they have to be put for adoption, and they let them go to pretty much anywhere. There's there's a whole big story to it, but but yeah, that I don't think is as serious or as bad. But I've made some pretty hefty bets on some dog races. My dad uh, used to bring me to the dog track growing up, and then so when I turned eighteen, you know, I used to go to the dog track and won some good money at the dog track. But yeah, it's shut down now, though. It's not there no more. It's completely shut down. They still have the horse races, though. Um, there's a place you can go go to that's nearby here, and you can watch all the horse races, like basically, in, or I don't know about around the world, but in America, and you can make bets on any of them. All different kinds, too. Lived in the Deep South for years. In the 80s, same people had fighting dogs and deer dogs. Really shitty way to treat an animal that lives to please you. Absolutely. And if people knew sometimes the extent a dog would go to to make you happy if they're trained right most people don't know what an intelligent dog is or what a trained dog is like some of the dogs that i would train people thought that like it was just that dog right like that oh that dog is just smart and my dog is stupid you know and it's like no nah, fuckhead your dog is not trained this dog is trained that's the only difference like and i don't i'm not blaming the person for not knowing how to train the dog Sometimes it is the person's fault because it's like, don't get your hands involved in something that you can't, you know, it's kind of like your kid, right? Like if you get a kid, if you don't raise your kid, right, and you're not uh, doing certain things with your kid, it's your fault. And I understand some people were taught the wrong way how to train a dog, but, um, but it's very, let me say this again, very easy to teach a dog almost anything. I've taught I've taught dogs to do extraordinary things very fast, very quickly. Um, I've had dogs that were very bad dogs when I showed up, and very quickly turn into good dogs. Um, as long as the people do what I say and continue it, I disagree. I have two dogs. Both of them are not trained. One is older and is still not as intelligent. Age has nothing to do with it. it has everything to do with training um i when i do like if i do a puppy class three months to six months old i can train the dog everything he's going to know for the rest of his life by the time he's six months old at six months old that dog could be doing everything playing dead um he'll recall sitting rolling over whatever uh go and get me this go do this blah 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 whatever um i can get him to do whatever um now he still will learn stuff and perfect things after six months old because between six months and a year old that's where they perfect those things they get the muscles in their back legs like say if i was going to teach a dog to play dead you know and i was going to fake shoot him and by six months he knows how to do it but six months to a year he's going to grow the muscles in the back of his legs and he's going to really perfect that performance but that's a performance trick but dogs learn incredibly incredibly fast at a young age. So between three and six months old, their brain is like a sponge. It's like a two-year-old child. So a two-year-old child, you see how fast they learn. They pick up everything. Everything they see, they pick up. Same thing with a dog between three and six months old. They still learn a lot between six months and a year. But after six months old, they're growing habits. 
just like a child at three to five years old. They're picking up habits. What's up, Stasa? Stasa says, thanks for letting me check out the AD20. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's a badass knife. I know a lot of people um, are jealous, but I did see an Instagram post from Demco saying he's got a whole batch of them coming out. And guess what? Oh, my God. I can't believe I didn't talk about this. Demco has got an AD20 with a compound grind. Let me grab this other. Okay, so I got the AD15 here. So he's basically made a hollow grind here and then the flat grind up front on the AD20. That looks sweet. So you could have like a really good slicer and then have the strength and the tip for light duty prying or scraping or whatever, you know, or if you're going to hammer something through, which even I'm sure the deep hollow grind that he has here, I'm sure it's not crazy thin because he's still going to want it to be strong. But I, I couldn't believe he was doing that. I think that's amazing. Jared, the dog and knife whisperer. Absolutely, absolutely. I've always been into the animals and training animals. That's why I went to school for training dogs because I was always good at it. And I've always loved animals. I've always loved hunting and fishing and, you know, animals, period. Um, I had a, a gang of reptiles one time when I was younger. Fuck, man, I've had hundreds of reptiles. I've had all kinds of animals, like lots of different pets. I even had a pet stingray. I had a, a raccoon. I've had fucking everything. So now that uh, we're past uh, dog fights, even though, man, I could tell you some crazy stories about some dog fights. Some, um, but we'll we'll go on to something else. So. What else was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about the, um, a drive-by. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, you know what? I, I seen on uh, Ray's uh, podcast the other day, they were talking about televisions. And I couldn't help but think, like, man, when I was a kid, the TVs were so old. They had a, Well, we also had an old TV, even for when I was young. Um, I was, I'm born in the 80s. But... You know, it was a turn dial. So that's how you turn the channel was by turning. Chick, 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 chick. And we had antennas. And you would take aluminum foil and wrap the antennas. And like one person would be sitting there trying to catch the signal. And the other person like, wait, hold on right there. A little to the left. And then you'd be stuck there for like 20 minutes trying to watch the show you know, around the corner. Hilarious. And then they were big boxes like just massive boxes you had the four tvs and then you had the, the ones that like went up on like an entertainment center now though man the flat screens are super light super thin clear as shit they look so good and it's just crazy how much it's changed but they were talking about televisions and um what i forget what they were talking about they were talking about something and i was like man i remember antenna oh yeah vcrs that's what they were talking about vcrs and he asked he said have you ever taped a, a v i think uh uh i think he was talking about the um you know the cassette that goes in the vcr the 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 tape and he was asking if you ever taped one up and i'm thinking like man i did that fucking for years taping stuff up and opening up and blowing them you had to do that and then pop it back in. Sometimes it would eat it. And you had to pull it out and rewind it back up with your thumb or with a, a butter knife. Um, some of these are, oh, cat barn stories, Bree said. <laughs> so uh, growing up at the barn, there were so many cats, wild ass cats too. I'm talking about these motherfuckers were like lions. And uh, they were literally wild cats. They were just barn cats. But these things were so crazy. I remember one time I had a sandwich. And I'm walking with the sandwich. I take a bite. And it's like walking like with it next to me. This cat comes up out of the blue. Like he's like hunting me for that sandwich. <laughs> Snatches it out of my hand. He hits the ground. And like 30 cats come in. Boom. <laughs> the fucking the sandwich is gone, Jack. I mean, it was like that. But I seen um, cats beat up dogs. I seen um, so many different wild cats. And then we had like one special one, which was like Mama Cat. And she was the one that had all the babies. She was a tough ass cat. But um, I also had to put a couple of them down before um, because I, you know, I was asked to because they had mange or whatever. Um, but yeah, we even had rats in that barn as big as cats. I remember, or big as squirrels at least. I used to have to hunt them. 
me and uh, old Max. Um, we had some barn cats. We had some barn cats with the horses. Jared had some stories. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there was uh, a couple horses. Then there was even the bulls at one time, and then the goats. Remember the goats? Uh, they were hilarious. I used to love those goats. Um, what does that say? I used to pray my horses would stomp out some of the cats out of the barn. No such luck. You ever seen a dog get kicked by a cat? I've seen a, a, a dog get kicked by, or by a cat, by a horse, where the horse bucks the dog. <laughs> they get fucked up. But uh, most dogs are pretty good if they're, like, around horses a lot. They know how to move around a horse, and the horse is usually pretty good with them if they know them. But if the horse does not know that dog, that dog shouldn't get near that horse. That horse will fuck that dog up. Oh, geez, the goats. I remember one time uh, our little cousin, I watched these two goats hunt my little cousin and i mean hunt like because they were gonna butt him with their heads they had these little horns and i seen my cousin my little cousin chasing one of them around the this garage and it's he's chasing the one but you see like their intelligence kick in and the one was like luring him around while the other one ran all the way around the thing ran up behind him and Bow, just nailed him right in the back of the ass. And he, you know, obviously fell down. But it was so hilarious. I thought it was so funny how they like it was like they planned it. Um, loose goats, no leash. They'd scare, yeah, they'd scare. I seen them on top of people's cars. You'd walk outside because these things, like he said, no leash. They were just free running goats. And You'd uh, walk outside and you would see, because you know how goats, they like to be high. They like to climb on top of stuff, you know, like kind of like mountain goats. They'd be on top of somebody's fucking car. <laughs> Somebody would walk out with hooves all over their car. It's like, fuck. Oh, man, this shit was hilarious. Um, But uh, what else was I going to talk about? Um, Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about the first job in construction. So, did she leave me the coffee? So I, um, you know, I grew up doing, you know, different kinds of construction from, you know, like birth. But when I was like eight to ten years old, that's when I really started working construction. And it was just, you know, the way, you know, it was going to be. My dad, you know, bringing me on the job site, you know, work and blah, blah, blah. Well, when I was like ten years old, I got a real job, like where I was going to get paid hourly. I had already done a little bit of landscaping with another family member or family friend, I should say. And um, I had been doing that a little bit, but then I went to go work some concrete. And uh, it was actually for Breeze's dad. And um, I went out there, man. And I remember, I'm like 10 years old and I'm trying as hard as I can, you know, but you don't have the muscle definition. And I'm fighting my ass off to keep up with these full grown men. And it winds up being like a shitty job, just a straight mud hole. We're doing a, um, a footing around, you know, in a hole for a house, you know, for the walls, for the concrete walls. And then the house will get built on top. And it's just a mud pile. It had rained. We had to pump the water out. We had to dig all the sludge out. And using the, the shovels, you know, you're getting uh, blisters all over your hands. You know, within an hour, I'm bleeding all over both hands. Bloody as hell. At one point, I even fell in the mud, um, trying to like track through the mud with the with the rubber boots, and so exhausted, man. I was beat up, but I remember uh, just just being so sore. And then, like, I feel like that's like my life story after that. Like, just doing construction, going home, and just bloody hands sitting there. Like, you know, your feet are just blistered to death. Your hands are blistered to death. And you just want to, you, you literally get home and you don't even get in the shower and you just collapse, just hit the damn bed asleep. Next thing you know, you're waking up, four in the morning's coming, go back to work. Like, fuck. Yes, concrete's always a shitty job. Yes, definitely. 
Absolutely. It can be. A lot of different jobs, though. Even uh, carpentry. Carpentry can be a motherfucker. I've done everything. So I've done landscaping, carpentry, siding, roofing, uh, sidings and window, um, flooring. Um, you name it, I've pretty much done it. I've done plumbing and electrical, but I'm not, it's not my trade. I've done it because, you know, of other people knowing how to do it and teaching me how, but it's not my trade. I couldn't go and do it. I could do small jobs, but I couldn't go out and fully do an entire house um, without having a professional there helping me. Like, I could do small jobs, put in a sink, do this, do that, but yeah. Um, yeah, they come at you in packs, bro. One of my first jobs as a kid was bricklaying. Done that too many times. $21 an hour is a lot for a 15-year-old. But talk about a terrible job. Yeah, I was getting like 10 bucks an hour when I first started. And then I wound up making less like the next year. But uh, but it's just the way it was. Um, but yeah, it's uh, bricklaying is a motherfucker too. My grandpa was a bricklayer. Uh, okay, so. I want to talk about uh, 10 geese. That sounds traumatic, Jared says. <laughs> you know what's really good, though? You know what's delicious? A goose egg. You ever ate a goose egg? They're nice and big. The yolk is so big. When you break it open and you put it in a frying pan, you know the big frying pans? It fills the whole frying pan. Literally, a regular large size plate, when you're done, that's how big the whole white part is. And the yolk is like this big. It's heavy. You can feel it, like the weight from it. And if you guys don't know, the better quality an egg is, the darker the yolk is. So if you get a really dark yolk, that's a good quality egg. The lighter and clearer it is, that's the lower quality egg. Like, like chickens kept in coops and uh, cages and stuff like that. But like free range chickens and good raised, healthy raised chickens, the yolks will actually be more solid too. Like you can actually hold it in your hand. If it breaks open, you ever seen those eggs where every time you crack one open, it just breaks? That's because it's a cheap, un, it's not quality. The The bird wasn't raised right. That's why, you know, like when you get, like even if you go to the store and you buy eggs, you can get the 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 free range chickens and stuff like that where, you know, they can roam and they, you know, eat bugs and, you know, bird seed or whatever, grass, whatever they want to eat. Those are a lot healthier and the yolks are a lot harder. They're stronger and they're darker. But, um, but yeah, goose eggs though, man, delicious. You can take like a whole piece of toast and dip it in there. If you like yolk, I love yolk. I love me some yolk, but, um, so we got 902. So, okay. So now let's get into some, uh, some crazy shit. Now we're going to talk about um, the first time I saw it drive by. So this was the first time. So before that, I had heard them, you know, like out my window and, you know, I, I, you know, hear the shootings and whatever, but I had never like seen one, you know, like eye to eye, like I actually watched one like, out on my balcony and um, across the street at this place that I was living at the time that I was living at this place, there was a car lot across the street. And across the street, this car lot was there, and they had cars on there, and the person sold cars, obviously. Well, this car comes creeping by, and there's a couple of us up on the balcony. We're just kind of sitting on the balcony, you know, watching the neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. This car comes around, and he's going real slow past the car lot. Not a big deal. Happens all the time. No big deal. Well, then he comes back around, and when he comes back around, he pulls a gun out, you know, and there's probably a couple people in the car, and starts shooting. At the car lot. Not at people, though. He's not shooting at people. He's shooting at the cars. <laughs> so he shoots up this car lot. You know, he's hitting the building, too. But he's hitting mainly the cars. And he, you know, goes past, shoots up the cars, goes back around the block. <laughs> and comes back. Second round. Shoots him up again. So he does two rounds. Not one, but two. Well, technically three rounds. But the first time, he just circled. Um, maybe making sure there wasn't people standing there or something. I don't know. I'm guessing it was one. Well, actually, I have a couple different, you know, theories. One, it was another car lot that paid somebody to go shoot up their rival car lot. Number two, somebody who got a shitty car and then the company or the car lot wouldn't do anything about it. So then they were pissed or possibly somebody did not like the owner and just had beef with them. 
I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was funny as hell. And we were in no danger because we're up on a balcony looking down at it. And you can see where he's aiming the whole time. So nobody ran or anything. We just sat there and watched it, like, just cracking up. Um, Michael says, we had pigs, 200 laying hens, meat kings, turkeys, and geese. Dude, wait, dude couldn't get approved for a car loan. Right, right, right. I don't think this car lot did those. You know, they just sold outright, but yeah, something. He got mad at something. Uh, it's Joe. <laughs> Joe Savant says double tap. That's what you call double tap, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. That is funny as shit. Um, I was going to talk about something else. Oh, yeah. I was going to talk about the, a time when I was mugged. Um, So... It's kind of hard to to understand exactly what happened without you know being there, seeing what happened. Hang on a second, this fucking thing. But well, first of all, let me go back. My uh, Andrew, I call him my brother, my best friend, my brother. He's passed away now. He um he was mugged at knife point one time, um behind uh a um a meat market you know meat market gas station quickie mart kind of thing is a meat market but he got mugged at knife point you know and he gave it up because it's like is it worth it it was over some weed you know so it was like you know who you know who cares really right are you really gonna fight for something like that i mean sometimes you would and i know i've fought for less but in certain scenarios, it's like, who cares, man? If you need it that bad, shit, you could have just asked. But uh, but anyway, so with me, I'm talking about Galilee, yes. The meat market on Galilee it was behind there. Andrew got robbed at knife point. Um, he was uh, trying to, I think he was selling like an eighth of weed or something like that. And the uh, dude walked up on him and stuck the knife to him right to his gut and didn't stab him, but stuck it right to his gut and told him he'd stab him if he didn't give him the shit. So Andrew's like, here, take the shit. Um, and sometimes you can see in people's eyes, you know, like this motherfucker will cut me right now. You know, certain people you can tell, you can see the fear in them. And then certain people you can tell, like, don't fuck with this dude. Um, he has nothing to lose. Um, prison's a blessing to this guy. But um, so going to the story with me, um, I'm in my work van and, you know, I know people where I'm at kind of, you know, I'm not necessarily in my neighborhood, but I know some of the people that live in the building. So this, uh, this dude goes to jump in and when he jumps in, I thought it was somebody I knew, you know, I was not expecting it to not be. And you understand like lots of different situations that have happened to me in life have made me like jumpy and more pay attention or more attention attentive more um you know where I, I pay attention to little details a lot more but um this situation i really got caught off guard i thought it was my friend dude jumps in the van he's got a gun and um he has it so i'm sitting here right driver he jumps in over here but then he has the gun like that, you guys can't see me, but well, he has the gun like that. So let me lift this thing. That's as high as it'll go. Anyway, so he has the gun on his side, right? I'm on this side. I can't reach it. I technically had a knife, a fixed blade stuck in between the seats right here in a sheath. It was stuck in between. And I didn't have my gun on me. I, you know, I didn't at the time. I didn't have nothing on me. I just had the knife. I technically could have grabbed it, right? Yank, stab, right? Could have. Not really, though. Because when he jumps in, he's got the gun on the side, and he's got it pointed at me like this. I can't get to it fast enough. And um, so he winds up robbing me, right? And there wasn't much I could do. And um, so the point is, is that, you know, a lot of times the way you picture a scenario is not, is not the way it goes. So for me to have, oh yeah. And he's seen the knife. He's seen the knife right away. And he says, you touch that knife. He says, I'll pop your fucking ass. 
Well, I wound up finding out later that I actually was very lucky because he was part of a hit squad and had already shot a few people. Probably in prison now. I don't know. But I did wind up finding out um, about the person. I'm not going to say what I did for revenge or anything like that, but he was part of like a squad. So at the time, like if I would have went to grab the knife, his trigger pulls faster than me grabbing the knife. Even me lunging for it, I wouldn't have got it. You know, I had a steering wheel in my way. It's just the, the opportunity and the speed and the aggression that I would have had to have done couldn't have overcome this. Right? It's not a chance. So there was nothing, nothing I could do. And I could tell he was serious, you know, like, you know, you know when somebody's fucking serious and how they act and like whether or not they're nervous or anything like that, you could tell he, he's done this before. And like I said, I did find out later that this guy was, uh, you know, like I said, they were running around doing this shit to a lot of people. A couple people had gotten shot, like a lot of different things. So it was pretty good that I did wind up giving, you know, just giving it up. Now, I've had other situations like that where I didn't give it up. Like I got jumped from my shoes one time and I fought a bunch of motherfuckers for my shoes. And I was just for my shoes. But this was a different scenario. And uh, yeah, it did wind up going in his favor that night. Uh, Need a taser switch built into the seat. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, I tried to replay it out in my head multiple times. Like, what if I went for the knife? Right. And every scenario in my head, I get shot. So is it what would it be worth it? Really? Probably not. Obviously not. Um, and, you know, there's always, you know, get backs, you know, um, you know, without saying get backs, you know, there's always that. But uh, but at the time being, sometimes, you know, you got to cut, you know, you got to count things as a loss. Sometimes, sometimes it's just not worth it. And um, and like I said, then after I heard what type of person he was and the things he had already did, then I, I was pretty thankful because my attitude and especially at that time in my life, I was surprised at myself for not trying to fight for the gun or something. You know, you don't know what you're going to do in a situation till you're put in it. But, but I had been in a lot of stupid situations similar, right? And, and that, you know, it just so happened that obviously I was smart enough to know, like, I got the short, you know, like he's got the upper hand no matter what. But, um, I've seen people, I've seen people get stabbed. Wait, I would get stabbed by an open trails. I see Jeremy says, I've seen people being shot and stabbed. It's, I don't know what that is. What is that thing? What does this one show it as? I don't know, but yeah, it's no good. It's no good. I've seen both too. I've seen both. Um, and yeah, it is no good. Um, you love to tell a story, bro. That's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what matters because, you know, I know I have a lot of friends that didn't, you know, my, my one buddy, um, I think I told this story before, but he, um, was at my house and he had some cell phones. He owned a pawn shop and I did a bunch of work at his pawn shop, uh, lots of work redid this whole pawn shop. He had a really good business going, but he was involved in a lot of shady people and, you know, owning a pawn shop, you're gonna, but besides that, you know, he had kind of a shady deal going on. Like, uh, you, you could say he's a gang member, blah, blah, blah. Anyways. Um, but he owned this a pawn shop and he was at my house and, um, he had these, uh, these, oh no, wait, did he have the cell phones or was he buying cell phones? No, I think he was buying yeah he was sorry he was buying cell phones not or no wait yeah he was buying cell phones i'm sorry he was at my house and he was about to leave to go buy some cell phones from somebody to sell in his pawn shop this was years ago phones were like like hot kicks you know at the time and uh he leaves goes and does the deal and um he winds up getting murdered so what happened was was the guy I'll tell you my theory about what happened afterwards, but what happened was, was the guy jumped in the car, wound up shooting him in the back of the head. He had his cousin with him. So his cousin was the driver. He was the passenger and dude jumped in the back seat, shot him in the back of the head and took his money. <clears throat> um, 
because he had the money like this. You know, they were going to trade the phones for the money and do chum. So now my theory is that dude jumped in the car to mug him not to kill him. And I think that he probably had it cocked and it was on a hair trigger. You know how like when you cock a gun, the the trigger pull is very light compared to if you don't. So my guess is he had it to the back of his head and had it cocked and got nervous and flinched, you know, and probably touched the trigger. It went off because why didn't he kill the cousin? Why didn't he kill the witness? He didn't kill the cousin or the witness. If, if he meant to, he would have shot them both. Bow, bow. And then took the money. That's not how it went. He said, give me all the money. Dude gave him the money because he knew. And this dude was a gangster. Dude had a gun on him. So he could have fought back, but he didn't. Because he knew dude had the upper hand. Dude had a gun put to the back. So there's nothing he can do. He's giving the money up. So that's what he did. Gave the money up. As soon as the dude got the money in his hand, he shot him in the back of the head. So I think he got the money in his hand and he flinched. And it went off. And, uh, you know, seeing the car later, you know, with the window. Because the window wound up uh, getting blown out from the bullet. You know, but... You know, it was it was really sad. You know, it was like literally five minutes he just left my house. Uh, and I've had a few friends die leaving my house. Uh, the first one was when I was a, a little kid. I was like 13, 14. My buddy was at my house and he, um, you know, there's a whole story to it. But long story short, he left my house to go home. He was on his bike and wound up getting hit by a car. Actually, it wasn't like uh you know, like the other story where it was murdered, it was an accident, but he got hit by a car, you know, but when I'm 13, 14, I think I was 13 or 14, probably 14. Um, you know, that was devastating to me. That was my best, you know, one of my best friends, especially where I was living because I was, I wound up moving down South, South Chicago with my mom. And, um, you know, that was my best friend down there, you know? So, but, uh, Got into a bar fight with some out-of-towners, and dude was asking around for a knife. Like, somebody give me a knife. Somebody give me a knife. Luckily, nobody did. He got his ass beat plus arrested. And you don't want to give a guy like that a knife. Why didn't he already have a knife, dumbass? <laughs> I just unboxed another Recenti Custom today. That's sweet. If you guys uh, don't know, definitely check out Nath Sergeant's uh, channel. He's been unboxing a lot of beauties, a lot of beauties lately. And that other Recenti Custom was beautiful. Timascus, sweet. Um, hi, Amy. What's up, sweetheart? Um, I haven't bought any new knives for about a year now. I don't know what I plan to get next. You'd think I would have already found what I wanted next. Yeah, I got a um a TRM button lock on, or not button lock. Why did I say button lock? Access lock on the way. I think they call it the rock or the river lock or something, or the river rock lock, something like that. Anyways, I got one of those on the way. <gasps> Badass. I technically got a little something else too coming. I haven't told Carrie yet because it's kind of for her. Looks pretty sweet, though. Looks pretty sweet. Yeah, over some damn phones. It is definitely a rough way to go out. Over three iPhones. No good. Three or five, one of the two. And, you know, when he was telling me he was going to do the deal, it was just a normal thing. You know, you wouldn't even think nothing. He always would go out and buy um People's gold watches, silver, whatever, you know, is a normal thing for him, you know. So phones was just another part. The shadow, yes. Thank you, Pluto's Moon. Thank you. Yes, the TRM shadow. Can't wait for that one. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about that one because everybody is like, it was, you know, they've checked it out and one, it looks really sweet. It looks very comfortable in the hand, and TRM makes a hell of a knife, so I can only imagine how good of quality that knife will be. Um, Arizona Customs. Custom Knives is my kryptonite. Yeah, I bet. I bet. 
I kind of feel like there are some cool new trends coming with EDC. I'm kind of holding out till they hit. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of new stuff dropping over the next couple months from a few companies. And, um, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on where you're talking about. I don't know if we're talking about high end or budget, but I know like uh, some of the the mid range companies are definitely dropping some some cool stuff. But yeah, there's you know what in the knife community, there's always something dropping. There's like if you buy something now, next week there's gonna be something else. Always gonna be something else. Forever something else. Arizona Customs is really annoying. Why do you say that? Uh, really annoying to shop on, though. Sorting sucks. I feel that way sometimes with White Mountain Knives. I feel like every time I go on there, it's like, uh, uh, notify me, notify me, notify me. They're sold out. Notify me. I had them. I got them. They're going to notify me about two knives right now that I went and uh, checked out. But I hate that. It's like, how about <clears throat> everything you got in stock, put in there. The things that you have out of stock, just make another list for that. Out of stock items that are coming soon, you know, the notify me list instead of just having like, okay, we have this knife. Now we don't have this knife, this knife, this knife, this knife, this knife. We have this knife. We don't have this knife, this knife, this like, I feel like the majority of their knives aren't there. At least maybe it's just me and the way I'm going through it. Dandy, wait your turn. Take your turn. Yep. Definitely. Wait your turn. Take your turn. Yeah, exactly. Let me select only in stock. Right. Right, Matt Lambert. It's like, what the hell is going on? I feel, I feel like every time I go there and I see something I like, they never have what I want. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There's been a couple knives I've been lucky, but more often or not, it's all notify me. And I'm curious now because I've never done the notify me. I've never done it. And now I did. Now I'm curious, like, how long am I going to be waiting for this? Like, is it going to be two, three months or something? Like, I won't give a shit that, you know, I got, it's like, I got the money now. <laughs> they want you on there longer. Yeah. Um, Knife Sergeant says, yes, it's, it's a hit. Or miss sometimes. That's with all of them. It's not just you. I'm sure. I'm sure it's everybody. But why do you set your site up like that? I don't get that. I don't get why you wouldn't have like in stock. Not in stock, but coming soon. You know, like, because then you can decide to do the notify me list. You won't remember, right? And then when I get the email, it'll probably be like, oh, yeah. And then, like, yeah, I already bought something. I'm over it. I'm over it. Oh, maybe. Not really. I'm really, I know that one. I won't be at least one of them. But still, though, who knows about the money? The CRKT Golf. Um, I don't have one. I don't have one coming. I honestly haven't done a CRKT in a while. Let me see what it looks like. Um, I don't buy too many CRKTs because I got bad luck with CRKT, to be honest. And not saying that, you know, anything, but, uh, it looks cool, but, uh, we'll see what happens. Wow. They're going for some good money, ain't they? See, this is, this is another thing with CRKT. I bet it's D2 because for 107, this thing. I see one for $75 and I see one for 107 but at Walmart. Let's see smoke let's see what Smoky Mountain Knives has them for. Um $67. Uh 8CR. Yeah, see I won't do that. No. Um and nothing against 8CR, but 8CR's yesterday steel. We're we're in 2021 now. Get rid of 8CR. HCR should be for like M tax and stuff like that. I'm not saying HCR is a bad steal, but come on, guys, it's sixty six dollars. I can get, I can get some damn good steel for like one fifty four CM, fourteen C twenty eight N, N six ninety, VG ten, Aus ten, um, shit from some companies. I can get way better than that, even D two. You know, so I think they're asking for a bit much, and I bet you it's made in. 
overseas anyways. So it's like there's no reason why it should be that much money. So, yeah, that's one of my problems with them. And I get it sometimes, but sometimes it's like, come on, guys, catch up. Catch up, guys. It's 2021. CRKT always thinks that they use anything better than HCR. It should cost 140 And that's my point, too. It's like, don't put D2 on it and then raise the price. How about keep the same price for D2? Because other companies can do it. It's like, I can get 14C28N for 30 40 bucks from other companies. I can get D2 for, you know, 30 40 bucks from other companies. I shouldn't have to pay $60 for HCR from you. HCR is shit to me. I, I don't, I won't buy it personally. Now, if somebody has it and they want me to review it, that's one thing, but I won't purchase it because I like to get the best bang for my buck. Now, I don't mind. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind paying extra for a mid grade steel. Like, say, if you said, okay, this is um, N690 or something, but it's $140. That's a very expensive for N690. Very expensive. But if it's got the good materials, good fit and finish, a good quality company, good reputation, and all that stuff, good warranty, blah, 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 that's fine. A good mid grade steel done right is good. But, uh, a budget steal for a mid grade price, I can't I can't do that. Especially when I can't guarantee that it's good. Like I said, I got a bad I get I got a bad record with uh CRKT. At least go with OS 8 over 8 CR so we know it's quality. So it's quality steel. Um I just would, would like them to do 9CR, 12C27, 14C28N. I could name a, a hundred steals that would be better than than 8CR. Like I said, 8CR is yesterday's steal. It really is. I don't know why I hate N690. I just hate N690. I don't have a problem with N690, but it's recyclable, right? We could say 154CM then. You know, 154CM, a lot of... um um. Custom makers use it. Tons of custom makers use. Well, they use usually CPM 154. But my point is, is that you can pay $500 for a blade steel on CPM 154. But usually it's done on a smaller heat treat level. So it's usually going to be better quality than you'll get on a production level. But either way, it's still a good steel. You're not buying a under budget steel. Because that's the way I look at ACR. I don't consider it a budget steel. At this point, I consider it an under budget. You know what I mean? Like it's left. It's kind of like you remember two, three years ago when HCR was a budget steel, and what was the the um the lower steel? Three CR, five CR, stainless. That's the way I look at it now. Now I know it's not as bad as stainless. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera to focus. I know it's not as bad as like stainless, but. Yeah, I would, but uh, you guys would all leave. <laughs> um, ATS-34. Yeah, that steel was originally made for razor blades. That steel takes a very, very keen, keen edge. You can really lay that edge back. It's a very stable steel. If I remember correctly, I've sharpened it a couple times, and it can take an extremely keen edge ATS-34. A lot of custom makers use that, too. Just ordered an N690 Karambit, my first N690. I don't think there's anything wrong with N690. I compare it personally to 154CM. You can... Um, Depending, you know, 154 CM, you don't really want to put a polish on N690. Sometimes you can get away with a polish. Sometimes you can't. Kind of just depends on the heat treat. But Hawaii says only the finest recycled Yugo bumpers. <laughs> I have HCR Spyderco. Not super shitty, but not great either. Now, that's my problem with the Tenacious in, in, in HCR, not if they're in D2, whatever. But, um, they're wanting what 50 bucks 50 you know i think 50 dollars for them or something and to me it's like come on guys step it up a little bit that tenacious should be 30 dollars. you know that you guys have had it forever it's it's a good quality knife don't get me wrong i think it's a damn a damn good knife but 
if you're going to sell it for 50 bucks, put a $50 steal on it. You guys have been building it for so long. You guys have extra parts for years to build those knives. Like at a certain point, like it's like, come on guys, let's, let's be realistic here. You guys have been building it for 20 years and haven't changed your steel. Come on. It's that damn spider, spidey tax. It's a little bit less than that damn butterfly tax. So 600, 800, yeah, I would leave it right at 600 grip. And rem, I'm, rem, right now, I'm speaking about diamond. So if you're using a, a net, um, an, an aluminum oxide or something like that, you might even want to go a little bit lower because with diamond, diamond tends to be a little bit more coarse with their grit. So a 600 grit diamond and a 600 grit aluminum oxide and aluminum oxide will be a little will be a lot finer than a diamond. So when I'm talking grit, I'm specifically talking about diamond. So 600 grit diamond. If you're talking about aluminum oxide, then I would say more of a, you know, I don't know. It just depends on your aluminum oxide. There's different kinds. So Spidey tax is definitely a real thing. I have the S35VN tenacious, but added another $50 to the price. Yeah. Um, I like the knife. I think it's a damn good knife. Um, I buy my knives mainly for the way they look, but I do like them to be nicer steels and nicer materials. Now, I agree. I think you need to like the look of the knife. I find myself being attracted to the things that I enjoy now, like thin grinds, thin blade, uh, uh, good ergos, good action, um, good sharpening choils, um, the blade shape. Those are the things that attract my eye. And then also the materials. Now, you obviously have to be attracted to the knife first before you want to make a purchase. But to me, at a certain point, like, I want to get my money out of it. My, my point is, is that say if it looks good, right? It looks good. But they're selling you, say, FRN and stainless, right? And it looks badass. It looks gorgeous. It's your style of knife. And they want 50 bucks for that. That's a $10 knife. You're getting ripped off. So to me, it's like, I will look for the right materials to make sure I'm getting what I'm paying for. Put it this way. If you go to the scrapyard, right? And you recycle aluminum, steel, copper, brass, wire, etc. There's a price. What it's that right now. So like say copper, say if it's at 329 a pound right now, right? That's what you're going to get for it. So companies, when they make products with copper, they have to pay a certain price, of, you know, for copper. It, there, it's a price. It's kind of like a gold standard or a silver standard. Those materials are based on a pound or a, a ton or whatever. So if a company is selling you certain materials at a certain price, they're ripping you off. Now, there is the price of which they had to do the machining, the milling, the hours, the blah, blah, blah. But at a certain point, it becomes too much. That that Those materials are not worth that price. Do you know what I mean? It's like if... Um, if you try to sell me an ounce of gold right now and I said, nope, I'll give you 50 bucks, right? Well, you could take it down the street and get fucking, you know, 1100 or 1700 I think gold's at 1800 or something like that, 2000 right now. I forget what it's at an ounce. I haven't checked it in a few days. I forget. But the point is, is that I'm ripping you off, right? So, or if I have an ounce of gold and I say, I'll sell this silver, this, um, this one ounce gold coin to you for $5,000, right? And I'll carve your name in it or something. I'm ripping you off. It doesn't cost me $4,000 or sorry, $3,000 to carve my name in it for you. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the price of the materials and what it takes for them to make it. And I understand everybody has to make their overhead and make their profit. I'm not saying not to. They're obviously going to make their profit. But at a certain point, put better materials on there. Oh, I'm not into coated blades. I got the Zcarta, but I, I went on to see if it was sold out and XHP Shaman was gone. In under three minutes. Some of those spider clothes, man, they're gone really quick. It's kind of like we were talking earlier about the um 
the Warren Cliff PM2, that thing sold out so quick. I'm sure they'll have another run of it, but it's crazy how fast some of them go for. Do you guys think, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys think it is 1740? So I was right the first time. I said 1800 or 17, $1,800 or something. So I was close. Um, so do you guys think that they're going to make a new, um, a new spider co, um, slush buoy? Do you guys think they're gonna, or do you guys think that's just a myth, a legend? Because rumor has it that they might be making a second addition to the Slush Buoy. And then if they do, if you guys do think that, do you guys think it'll be the exact same, or do you guys think it'll be different? I think it'd be smart if they made something different. Because I think that they would hurt the value of everybody that has, because man, these things are sweet. I'm not going to lie. These things are sweet as fuck. The sound, the the lockup, how smooth it is, it is very good. Now, I hope so. I sure hope so. I know that's my warning you have there. I know. Um, uh, but what I'm, but the, the slush buoy though, if they do make them, are they going to make them different, or do you guys think they're going to make them the same? But yeah, I know this is your warning. But you know, think about. Remember when we were talking? Remember how fast they went? Same thing with the shaman. Um, what was it? Uh, was it crew wear? The that not the G, the just the regular brown micarta. Yeah, crew wear. That one sold out really quick too. I think they still have them, but man, it seems like I think I'm not positive. Or look at this. The I hear so many times people are looking for the Microtech SOCOM Elite. It's like every time these things come, they're gone so fast. I have so many people trying to buy this from me because it's like almost impossible to find. They're always sold out. They should make them a little different. I agree. I think they should just to keep because for give the people that already have one of these and that like them and bought them for an expensive price on eBay or whatever, a reason to have the original, you know, because then you can charge whatever for the new one, but the original is still the original. And then some people can use the excuse, the original one's better. <laughs> you know what I mean? That new one, I don't like that new one. They're doing shit. I like my original one better. And then you'll have the people like, oh, the new one's way better than the old one. I like the, I like my new one. I don't like the old one. And really, it's just that one person has the new one. The other person doesn't have the new one. <laughs> <laughs> but if they improve them at all, that'll still drop the value of the OG. Well, I don't mean improve. I just mean change something. Something a little different. Maybe... uh put a more downward slope to the to the clip point buoy um maybe uh contour the grip just a little i don't know you know just make something a little different uh maybe a different color pattern uh maybe a little milling in the th i don't fucking know something um but they should keep a lot of or you know like get rid of the bag spacers put standoffs you know something like that i don't know True, I'd be heated if I paid off the ass on eBay and then the exact same knife was put back in production. That's what I mean, Blaze, is that that you're gonna if they do do it, they're gonna piss off a lot of people that literally seeked it out. Because think about how many people seek these out and then pay out the ass for it. And then all because they don't think it'll ever be made again. So they're like, I'm a spider co collector. And that's the one I don't have in my collection. I got to have that. That's the holy grail of spider codes. It's got to be in my collection. So then they say, fuck it. I'll drop the extra $300 on it. Then they get it. And then next year, <laughs> oh, shit. You'd be so sad. Oh, man. Spanky's back. Spanky's back. How many people we got? 48 people. People are dropping off. What time is it? Oh, yeah. 9.39. All right, guys. We're going to get out of here in five minutes. We'll call it a five minutes. They go for like $500. I know. I know. Um, I was blessed. This was gifted to me. And I, I'm very, very blessed. It's definitely amazing. And I love this knife. I'll, be, I'm, I'll just be straight up and honest. Like, it's a damn good knife. A really, really good knife. Um, 
It is no joke. Like, I always looked at it. I always thought it was bigger than it is, for one. And two, I never really had it in my radar because I never thought it'd be, you know, like, justified. But Bama Knife Guy always talked about his and said how badass it is. And then getting it in hand and feeling the, how smooth it is. Like, the way the lock sounds and just the fit, the finish, the how tight it is, like, you know, no play, how solid it is, just so many things. It just, it feels very good. It feels like a good knife. The Wii Mini Buster. That's a good knife. I, I, I reviewed one. I reviewed one of those. Damn good knife. Good night in five, Jeremy says. Do it in eight CR. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a shit show. People would buy it, though. People would buy it. That CS4 Max is almost $500. Yeah. Where is Bama? I see him on Instagram, but, you know, it's... I don't know, man. He uh, he was doing his channel for a while. Then he kind of stopped. Now, you know, he's... You know, he's got his family. I guess, you know, some people, they start a channel, and then they realize, like, it is a lot of work, you know, it's a hell of a lot of work. And I think he was just doing it for fun, but he's still in the knife community. He still buys knives and trades knives. He's always doing stuff like that. So he's always got his collection going. He's just not as outspoken as he used to be because man, me and him used to have some fun. We used to talk every week on the phone. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, um, you know, he's my friend. So, you know, We'll always be friends, but uh, but you know I don't hear from him as much. But I should give him a call because I love the guy. He's a good guy, hell of a guy. But he was even doing knife sharpening videos for a while. Um, oh, nice! From what I've seen, I also like the Wii Pure Flipper. I don't know what that is. Left-handed, bang. That's another thing that's badass, man. You can really manipulate this thing left-handed really good. Um, but yeah, I hope we get Steve on here pretty soon. I'd love to get Super Steel Steve on here. I think that'll be a fun duo. Um, I don't see him on too many podcasts anymore. I know he was on uh what was it? Uh Sharp Talk, um, with Tom Hosang, um, like last year and I think that'll be a fun duo. I also want to get Ray from Everyday City Carry on here. I want to get a bunch of people on here. I'd love to have a chat face to face and uh, get these motherfuckers talking. Get them out of their fucking box. Yeah, I think it'd be a riot too. Um, I'm loving my new Finch holiday. The action is butter. A lot of people like those Finches. I don't really like the way they look, but. I, you know, I kind of do. They kind of look like a good grandpa knife, but I bet they're a good knife because a lot of people seem to like them. That's the way it is with a lot of knives. There's been so many knives where I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's not my style. Then I get it in hand and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, guys, I'm going to take off. I love you guys. Sorry, Kara's not singing a song tonight. Maybe one day I'll sing you guys a song, but not tonight. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for, you know, Thanks for the donations, man. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the donations. They truly help. And I love you guys. Peace. Let's see if we can do this. Night Spanky, Matt, Monster, Tyler, Maurice, everybody. Who else is in here? Joe, Hawaii, Tyler, John. I think that's a majority. Michael, Jeremy, Russ. Everybody, I love you guys. Collector, Poncho, Andrew Tool is in here. What the fuck? How did I miss him? Improved access to the lock side. Man, that would be, but then you'd wind up ruining it and everybody would be like, man, they made it better. Yeah, but that would be cool, though. I do agree. That would be awesome. Bink. Yeah, I do agree. All right, guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for being here. I don't know what this is. Let me get it out of my way. And... I'll see you guys on uh, Saturday. I love you, Aunt Don. Good night to you. Peace.